I've been waiting very impatiently over the last week or so for this box to arrive. Um, I thought I would video the uh, the unboxing and the and the, the setup. Um, you've already seen what this is because you saw it in the thumbnail, but I haven't seen it myself um, because I'm just opening the box up. It just arrived an hour or so ago. So let's see what we have. Fortunately, it seems to be very well wrapped. So this is an Apple Disc 2, the floppy disk from, from an Apple II. Um, and that's really what we have in here. So let me just uh, carry on unboxing a few more pieces and then we'll, uh, we'll put it all together here. So now that I'm done unpacking, here's what we have. This is an Apple IIe. Um, and two floppy disk drives, two um, uh, Apple Disk II drives. So the Apple IIe was the third model of um, of the of the Apple II. The original Apple II was introduced in 1977. Um, the Apple II Plus was in 1979, I think. And then the IIe, the E stands for enhanced, um, was introduced in 1983. Um, and expanded the amount of memory and had some other so it had built in um, 80 column support and things like that so so it, it, it added in various things that people used to have to buy special cards for um, there are there are a couple of different versions of the 2e this is a fairly early one as you can tell from this keyboard um, the the next revision um, uh, which was really just sort of cosmetic. It changed the keyboard and the, the later keyboard has a, um, a darker, a gray uh, keycap with, um, with black markings on it. This one, the whites on the, on the brown is more reminiscent of the original keyboard on the Apple II and Apple II Plus, which is one reason I wanted this version. Um, and then there's a later version called the, which is known as the, the platinum version, which has a different uh, uh, color and, um, and case shape. There is also a later version of the 2E called the 2E Enhanced, which is a rather silly name because the E in 2E already means enhanced. Um, and uh, sometimes that has a sticker on here to say enhanced. Um, we'll take a look and see whether this is an enhanced version or, or not. So let's have a quick look inside and see what we have. So there's a couple of cards in here. Um, this one is the um, controller card for the, for the, the floppy disk controller. So that's the, um, and then this one is um, the aux connector here. This is a memory expansion um, to allow it to, to add extra video memory so that it can do, it can operate in 80 column mode. Sometimes there's a version of this card that also adds 64, um, another 64K of user RAM. I don't think this might be that one. It's, um, it's hard to tell. Um, I have to confess, um, I, although I grew up using 6502 based computers, I never really used the Apple. Um, I used one for, I don't know, an afternoon around about 1985 or 1986, I think. Um, um, but, uh, uh, but this is, uh, so this, this is really um, a, a voyage of exploration for, for me. Um, this one that I bought on eBay has been recently restored. It's meant to be in working order, so I'm not going to have to recap it or anything. But I think the first thing I'm going to do is to um, disconnect the power supply and make sure that the voltages I'm getting from the power supply are, are reasonable before I try and um, power it on or, or, or do anything. So I think that's the next thing I'm going to, going to do. I've moved the discs out of the way. I've got my um, my multimeter here. 
uh, which we'll set to um, uh, measure DC voltage. Then let's, uh, let's disconnect this. And so let's see, it looks like these are the, these are the commons down at the bottom here. Um, and then we'll turn it on and test out what voltages were, what voltages we're getting. So let's turn it on first. And then let's see, what am I getting there? I'm getting 12 volts, it's a little high, but there's no load on that, so that's okay. Uh, up here, that's minus five. That's positive 12 and positive five. So that looks like it's um, that looks like it's it's checking out okay. Um, so I'm reasonably confident that everything's all right. Um, maybe I'll just go through and like make sure all the chips are seated okay and the boards are seated okay um, after it was uh, shipped. Um, and then I'm going to have to find a monitor so that we can try turning it on. So let's just put this back. Oh, turn it off first. But that was good. <laughs> it seemed to suggest that it was working. Um, it turned it on a little more, uh, a little sooner than I had intended. One of the lovely things about the Apple IIs is all the chips are socketed. So if you need to make modifications or changes or replace anything, um, it's, uh, it's super, super easy to do that. Okay, in the first instance, I'm not going to uh, test out the test out the disk drives just yet. Um, let me just fetch a monitor, um, and then we'll get this thing set up, and we'll see if it's working. Well, this monitor is um, utterly terrible, but it does have the advantages that first, it's very small; second, it's right here on the desktop; and third, it takes a composite input. Um, so it's enough to make us make us. Uh, we can use it to find out if the if the basic machine is working. Um, so so let's turn this on and see what happens. Okay, we got the startup beep, and then ignore this junk again. I said, like I said, it's a terrible monitor. We have the um, Apple II at the top of the screen. Now this version of the computer tries to boot from disk. Um, and I guess it's trying to do that because that even though there's no disks connected, there is a floppy disk controller card, so that's what it's trying to do. Um, but I think if I hit control reset, yep, then we come to basic. We've got a basic prompt. Um, and um, I can type basic commands and they work. Super, so this is this is working. Now let's see, I think there's a diagnostic I can run maybe like that, is that it? Yeah, okay, so let's try this. Um, and then it should say, I think, kernel okay, or something like that, once it's finished doing its memory tests. Kernel okay, all right. So this is actually working, super. Um, one thing I forgot to mention um, when I took it, when I opened it up, I had a quick look inside. So um, the the I checked the motherboard revision, and this is a revision B board, which is almost all of them. There was a revision A board, but it was taken out of uh, circulation and they re replaced with a revision B board um, pretty quick, early in the computer's life. Um, the date codes on most of the chips are 1983, and that's the year this machine was introduced. So I said that the keyboard suggested it was quite an early um, computer. I don't know at what point they switched to the black on gray keyboard rather than the white on brown. Um, but, uh, you know, this, it looks like, I think the latest one I saw was 39th week of 83. Um, so I don't know what Apple's inventory management was like, but I'm guessing that this is from late 1983 or early 1984. But I'll check in more detail. I was just looking at a few of the chips, not, um, not very many of them. Um, maybe we'll try and get something going with the disk drive. Uh, let's try that. Let me get the disk drive connected. All right, so now we have, um, I've just got one drive connected, drive one, which is down here. Um, there are, there's, you can add two disks in here and drive one is the, the top connector. Um, and the person who I bought this from was kind enough to include an actual floppy disk. 
Um, I did buy some, and I've also bought a floppy MU for this, um, which will allow me to to run disk images without actually having them on disks. Um, but we have we have this one, which has ProDOS on one side and DOS 3.3 on the other. Um, so let's try this out. I'll put the disk into drive one, turn it on. The drive is spinning, the light is on. I don't hear the heads seeking though. Doesn't seem necessarily to be reading anything from the disk. Let's uh, let's try the other side of the disk because it apparently has um, ProDOS on one side. You can see that um, the disk has been it's it's got uh, had a write protect notch um, stamped on this side as well. So we can try this side. Let's do it slightly differently. Let's turn the computer on and then, aha. Now we heard the, um, the head. Ah, there we go. Now it's seeking. Loading integer basic into memory. And there we go. Um, we have booted into DOS 3.3. Um, we can look up the disk catalog and there are a few things on there. Now then, let me so let me just try something because maybe maybe I just uh, handled that poorly. Suppose I turn the computer off. Um, last time I put this disk in and I closed the drive and I started the computer in that mode. So let's just try um, leaving the drive open, start the computer. Now we'll close the drive. And this time it's um it's working, it's uh, running ProDOS. Um, um, oh, that's great. So we've got ADT Pro on here and some other things. This is ProDOS 2.4. Oops, wrong button. Just reading the view.readme file. Um, and there we go. Um, this is actually, this version of ProDOS is much later than the last version that Apple released. So ProDOS has now become this um, uh, product supported by the, by the community. And that's what's going on here. Um, super, so we've got the disks working. Um, I have very little software on disk. As I mentioned, I have downloaded a number of disk images um, which I'll be able to use using or access using the floppy emu. So maybe that's the next thing I'm going to try. Although the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go get another monitor because um, using this thing is just it's just intolerable. I can't stand that. So so um, let me go fetch another monitor and then we'll uh, see about getting the floppy emu use, uh, up and running. All right, so I've got a larger monitor um, set up here. You can see why I didn't want to have to go and pull that down the stairs. It's not particularly big, but it was so much easier to use the small one, but that small one was just terrible. I just don't think I could have stood it any, any longer. Um, so it's um, actually connected here through an HDMI converter because of course the, um, the computer only puts out a composite signal. Um, and so, so it's going through that adapter to uh, upscale it and turn it into an HDMI signal. Um, let's just make sure everything's going okay. Um, I've got the floppy disks disconnected again. Okay, so there we go. We've got Apple II on the screen. It's trying to boot from a non-existent floppy. Um, control reset, and we're in basic. Um, uh, okay. That's all great. Oh, now actually on that last screen, because it was so terrible, we couldn't try this, but let's just try this. Let's go to PR hash three. And that sets us into 80 column mode. So now we're in, now we're in uh, 80 column text. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a little wobbly. I think this is the HDMI conversion. Um, uh, it's it's not quite sort of syncing up as it should. It's um it's 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 stable, but um there's a lot of wobbliness to that. Um, so so that's not good. Um, I'm not actually sure how I get out of that mode again. Oh, I think I can do escape. 
Um, let's do that. Let's do escape four. Yeah, that sets me back to 40 column mode and escape eight. Yeah. Okay, cool. So next thing um, is to is to connect up the floppy emu. So this is a floppy emu. Um, basically, it's a, it's a contemporary device that emulates a floppy disk drive, and it has on this um, micro SD card uh, a whole bunch, or I've already loaded a whole bunch of Apple disk images. Um, and so I can use these buttons to control which image do I want to do I want to use, and then that will be what I what uh, it, it boots. So let's try connecting that up. Um, this this is pin one, so I think so. It goes this way around. Um, the documentation warns you to be careful. Of course, I have to turn that off first. Warns you to be careful about it plugging these things in, but uh, just to make sure you get you get the polarity right, because there is no keying on um, on those. Is that good? Doesn't feel entirely on, but I think it's good. So let's see what happens. We turn this on. Okay, great. We've got um, we've got power on here. So let's just see. I don't know if you're going to be able to read this, but let's just see what we've got. Um, Oregon Trail. That's got to be the one I have. One I run first, isn't? Hasn't it? Because That's the world we live in. The first thing you have to boot has got to be Oregon Trail. All right, so let's, um, I want to reset this. I don't know if that's going to, okay, that powers that off. Turn it back on. Okay, it still has Oregon Trail. But that's not booting. I am not convinced that I've managed, that I've actually connected that up properly, so. Let me just have a go at that again. Let me, um, I will turn the camera off while I try and figure this out. Yes, this connector just really wasn't properly on. So let's try again. Turn it on. Oh, and it seems to be booting from the floppy emu. The colors are dreadful. Again, this HDMI conversion um, isn't going, isn't doing a terribly good job. Um, doing it with, uh, with with Apple computers is always a particular challenge because of the the clever ways that Steve Wozniak implemented color um, in the by using sort of artifacts of the NTSC signal, um, and so it's really sort of running on the bleeding edge of how um, how uh, color might work, and that pre presents a lot of challenges for for things like my my converter here. Um, but that's great. Let's just on what we can we do. We can travel the trail, learn the trail. Oh, who wants to learn anything? Let's just um, let's just go. Fine, banker from Boston it is. And that would be me. And there we go. We're running the Oregon Trail. Excellent. Let's um let's see what else we could um we could load up here. So let's like eject that disk and then look at some other things. Oh, here's one that would be fun to try. Um, if if Oregon Trail is whoops not next previous and then select. If Oregon Trail is the most classic piece or one of the most classic pieces of software to run. Um, this is the least classic piece of software in that um, this should be or will be um, the, oh, that's interesting. Um, so this is Attack of the Petsky Robots, which is a very recently released uh, game for lots of different 6502 machines that was written by David Murray, the 8-bit guy. Um, now, the interesting thing on here is, um, I wonder how I can... I would kind of like to turn the music off. Um, so one of the things that was interesting is when it was booting up, yeah, um, it said 128K on the on, at the bottom of the screen, and that's what I had. Um, oops. <laughs> 
Um, one of the things is I'm I'm not used to the the, the arrangement of, uh, of of arrow keys on here, so I keep doing that wrong. Um, I'm not really going to sort of make you watch that watch me play this because I don't know how to play it. Um, but it said 128k as it booted up. So that I mentioned earlier that the um, 80 column card, um, some some of those have uh, an extra 64k of RAM on them. So that brings the total user RAM on this machine to 128k. Now obviously the 6502 can only address um, 64k of memory, um, and that's got to include I/O space and the ROM space. So when you've got even just 64k of memory, and certainly when you've got 128, there's some overlay or um, batch um, uh, uh, bank switching mechanism going on, which I haven't figured out yet. But um, but that's interesting. So this does it seem have the um, have the extra 64k in there. That's good. That's what I that's what I thought it had. Um, but I wasn't entirely it wasn't entirely certain. Um, let's just have a quick go at something else because I did. Um, what else did I download here? Let's. Um, dun, 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 dun. Oh yes, let's do this one. As as an homage to Adrian Black, we must run Fat City, which is what Adrian always fires up on these computers. So nothing much happening, but this is blinking, which suggests to me that it should be loading, but it may not be the right sort of disk image. It does say it's, it says it's a 140K DOS 3.3 image. But it does not appear to be to be reading it. Let's just try that again. It's interesting. The Apple II sign did go. The screen went blank, so it took that away. But um, but yeah, it's not. It does not seem to be reading this. So there's obviously lots more for me to figure out here. Um, I've, as I said, I've um, never used one of these before. I do have some more PCs coming from it. I actually have a, a serial card that has already arrived and I want to play around with that and use that to connect it up to other computers and to transfer software on and off. I have an Ethernet card coming for this as well, um, which is another way to transfer transfer software um, on and off. And so as I sort of play around with those, um, I'll put some other some other videos together um, to, uh, to let you know how I'm getting on. Um, this, as I say, this is something that I've never really used before. So it's a, a voyage of discovery, even if what I am discovering is uh, what life was like in 1983 um, but this is going to be fun and I'm so glad that uh, this is working so well um, the person from whom I bought it did a fabulous job of uh, of packaging it all up so that it would come across the country um, and make it safely um, and so so yeah uh, lots for me to to play around with and lots to learn <laughs>